All right, chat, we have a couple of interesting things to talk about because, of course, yesterday was finally the big day. After being baited for like a solid week where every single day people came in chat and said, today is the day where we get the tin openings. Yesterday was finally the day <laughs> where whoever posted it in chat was actually right. <laughs> <laughs> Every single year, I feel like the Mega Tins are a very, very anticipated event in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. It's like everyone, everyone really waits for the Mega Tins and is really looking forward to them because, of course, the concept of the Mega Tins is really good. We can all agree on that. The Mega Tins' main purpose is to reprint some of the recent sets, right? The original idea is provide reprints for all or most of the cards that came out in recent i think it's the recent year also provide rarity upgrades to certain cards the third thing is that the mega tins occasionally add new tcg exclusives to the game anyone remembers cards like nibiru the primal being dimension shifter <laughs> dark ruler no more all those cards uh in case you don't remember originally released in the Megatins in 2019. All three actually in 2019. The 2023 Megatins have been almost completely spoilered by now. We know all the cards, all the rarities. We know the new cards. We know the reprints. We know which cards are missing from the tins as well. Once we've talked about all that, I want to maybe speculate a little bit about are these tins good or not? You know, are, are we happy with those tins, right? Because I'm hearing a lot of different opinions on the tins. So far, mostly negative. In Twitch chat right now, I see a lot of people like, hey, underwhelming, not a very good product. Let's talk about it. First, let's look at it from a more calm standpoint. Let's see what's going on with the 2023 Mega Tin. One thing that I was really confused yesterday was why cards like number C32 Shark Drake Vise are in the tins. This thing originally came out in 2012 <laughs> and the reason for that is that they have included a couple cards in the tins that simply needed uh, an errata they changed its text and that's why it's in the tin and that applies to a couple other cards nothing too important here the msrp is 22 bucks per tin three packs and a promo card so that means per pack you get two secrets two ultras and a super that means in total for a tin for 22 bucks, you get six secret rares, six ultra rares, three super rares, and a promo. These are the promos that you can get. Cards that I'm looking forward to is Cyber Dragon, Stardust Dragon, Black Rose Dragon, uh, Blackwing, Armor Master for like Edison enjoyers. Maybe Utopia is nice if you're playing other formats from back in the day, like uh, Tengu Plant or something has Utopia. But that's about it. So for ultra rares, let me just see what's like a good reprint and whatnot. Libromancer Geek Boy, not a terrible ultra rare at least. Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy, that's a nice upgrade too for people that didn't want to spend 400 bucks for a Starlight Rare. The ultra rare Dark the Dark Charmer is, is nice. The entire adventure engine is in the tins again, which is interesting because it feels like the adventure engine has been reprinted into Oblivion by now. I'm still not mad about it because I'm going to be honest, I currently don't have an adventure engine and I looked at purchasing one at some point the entire adventure engine was still like 50 bucks or something this was even more expensive before they announced the mega tin reprint it was 20 bucks even so the adventure engine even though it has been reprinted already was still expensive so in my books another adventure engine reprint even though it's a repeat from a recent set is still a very good thing the adventure engine i think is a bonus for for these these mega tins they're a positive we got Naturia Blessing Rarity Upgrade, which is looking nice. However, Naturia, of course, not very popular anymore. This one is a little late. I'm gonna be honest with you. I prefer this way of doing it. I prefer heavily when good cards come out, like the Naturia cards, that they print them in low rarities and then give them a rarity upgrade later on. That, in my opinion, is a lot better than when they print cards as a secret rare and then later on downgrade them. Another thing we're going to see when we get to the secret rares, almost all of the cash tier cards are in this set. Darkwing Blast is in here, Photon Hypernova is not. But that was to be expected. 
honestly. That is not something we could have asked for. Like, the Photon Hypernova is never going to be here. We got some rarity upgrades to Runics, multiples even. And we got some rarity downgrades, like Slumber, for example, has been downgraded. You guys know Rare is the, is the superior rarity, so Runic Slumber has been downgraded to an Ultra Rare. That's kind of sad. But Flashing Fire, Destruction, and Freezing Curses are getting an Ultra Rare treatment. This is an upgrade, because those cards have previously only been available as Super Rares, and Super Rares are disgusting. And Ultra Rares are less disgusting. So those are upgrades. That's cool. Runics are very good reprints in this set, and so are the Cash Tira cards. All the Exos were 10 plus, really? Michaelis and Pax were expensive? All right, then Exo Sisters are good reprints. Super rare reprints? I'm gonna be honest with you, I've looked through this yesterday during the opening and I was a little bit disappointed by most of the super rares being pulled. I feel like for most of the packs, the super rare was kind of like a meh card. I'm looking at this and almost all of this is bulk. Except for Mole Cricket and Camellia. I don't know about you guys, but I personally don't like supers very much. So I'm not I'm not too mad that they put irrelevant cards here. And now we have the, the bread and butter. What people are the most excited about, I feel like, when it comes to the Megatons, is the Prismatic Secret Rares. So there's a lot of cards here that are not very important, but Dynamorphia Theresia is not bad. The entire Dynamorphia deck was not that cheap, so that's all right. Illusion of Chaos is a good reprint. I believe that card was still expensive. Even though Illusion of Chaos has not been played much recently, probably one of the most expensive reprints so far. That is another topic that we can briefly talk about when we get to these secret rares. There's going to be a lot of cards here that were originally printed as a secret rare. They're going to get a prismatic secret rare in this tin again. And I've heard people complain about that. Why are you not rarity bumping commons, for example? Like cards that were commons previously, why are you not rarity bumping them into prismatic secrets or whatever with this mega tin? And a lot of people seem to be annoyed because they consider Illusion of Chaos, for example, that card used to be a secret rare. Why is it a secret rare again? And there is multiple other examples. On the one hand, I, I get it, right? I understand you. I understand what you're saying. It, it does make sense. It's a little weird. On another note, in my eyes, I still think it's fine to do that. I don't think it's terrible because I think Prismatic Secret looks different than Secret Rare. I think it's different. And also, I do understand from a Konami perspective as well, because the cards that they originally made secret rares are usually the more chase cards of the set, right? And that's why they want to give them the high rare treatment again, right? As a reprint even. That's that. I don't think it's that bad. But I, I do understand what you're saying. Fluanderies and the Advent of Adventure is uh, one of the better reprints in the set, unfortunately. <laughs> that card was expensive. You see where I'm getting at here. I understand the critique points for the set. I do understand it. I do think there is points where they could have improved this set. I still don't think I'm going to reach the conclusion that this is a bad set. I still think it's a good Megatin. I think it's just worse than in previous years. It simply cannot be a bad thing that so many cards that used to be expensive, like 10 euro plus, 20 euro plus, 30 euro plus, are now available in another print. Most of the secrets are decent cards. Tryhard, This Colosseum, Reich Phobia, Branded Banishment is a nice upgrade. Martha, Lightheart, Garura is another card that yesterday we didn't see it pulled in the opener opening videos people were like hella mad but garura is in here this oh god this is probably the best package in these megatons honestly this is probably what everyone wants bestials are getting the prismatic secret rare print them going from stinky super rares to prismatic secrets is a hell of an upgrade Cartesia is also a phenomenal reprint. I would say in general, the branded stuff in here is also pretty good, right? Uh, and then we have the Cash Tira cards. Fenrir, Unicorn, Ogre. Of course, all eyes on Fenrir. We have Labyrinth reprints with Lady, uh, I believe, Welcome Labyrinth is also in here. So nice, right? We have Upgrade to Shangri-Era. We have good standalone reprints like World Sea Dragon, Celantis, Muckraker. All of those cards are just going to be a lot cheaper now, right? More Labyrinth stuff here. Lovely Ariane, Ariana, Labyrinth, Labyrinth, Welcome Labyrinth, all with the Prismatic Secret treatment. The three most important runics. We have Runic Fountain, Runic Tip, Hugin. We have all the Exo Sister upgrades. Here's the Rite of Ramesir, Water Enchantress, and Fateful Adventure. And that's all the secret rares. I don't know, man. I have written down a lot of things that are good about these tins. A lot of good reprints. I think if you think about it from a less emotional perspective, I honestly think most people look at the set and they're like, Kurikara is not in here. I hate it now. 
but i think if you think about it from a more logical perspective this set has the adventure engine the runix cash tira exo sister illusion of chaos machinex reprint zombie vampire Therions, visa starfrost bestials garura branded reprints labyrinth reprints all that stuff i don't think it's a bad set and yes i'll give it to you most of the good reprints are secret rares however the secret rares in this set are not that hard to get there's like 60 secrets and you get two secrets per pack let's look at what is missing from battle of chaos let me go through here and point out cards that are relevant that i'm like sad about that they're not in here guardian chimera which is kind of sad because guardian chimera has been climbing like crazy that card is cash Onibimaru Soul Sweeper is a card that would have been a really, really nice prismatic secret. I can live without it. It's fine. Yeah, so really from Battle of Chaos, it's really only Guardian Chimera. In their defense, though, Guardian Chimera was already reprinted in Magnificent Mavens. Missing from Dimension Force. No Magnifica. I don't know if that's money. Is Magnifica money? Probably not. Nah, not really. It's like two bucks. Everything else here, very irrelevant. Missing from Power of the Elements. Okay, here we go. This is the elephant in the room. A lot of stuff from Power of the Elements is missing. We don't have the sprite cards, which is interesting, I guess. I would have thought they would just throw the sprite cards in there. Let's be honest, the only expensive sprite card is blue anyways, if that's even still expensive. 16, 17 bucks. It's an expensive card, and I think it would have been good to reprint it, but it's not super expensive. The deck is still somewhat relevant, right? I understand. I completely understand not reprinting tier limits because the deck is not really relevant right now, except for Pearl Rhino. Pearl Rhino would have been a good reprint because Pearl Rhino, I think, is still money. Because they always plan these sets, I think, months in advance. Maybe they thought that by the time that these Megatons come around, no one would care about tier or Sprite anymore. Maybe that's what they were thinking when they decided to do that. Ultimate Slayer. Is Ultimate Slayer expensive? Yeah, a little bit. And then we have probably the biggest card. Where is the biggest offender? Oh, there it is. Kurikara. This is the card that people are the maddest about that it's not in the tins. I think understandably so. Roughly a 50 euro card. And it would have been really nice for them to reprint Kurikara in this tin. I have no idea why it's not here. I honestly think if Kurikara was in here, we wouldn't even be having this discussion right now. I think really Kurikara is the big elephant in the room that everyone is complaining about when it comes to those mega tins because i'm gonna be honest with you everything else is fine about these tins in my eyes everything else is fine i think it's okay that they don't have the sprite cards even though it would have been cool but like it's not like sprite blue is crazy money the tier limit cards would be nice but at the same time they're not really meta right now no one is forced to play tier limits the one card that i am a little bit sad about is kurikara if kurikara was in there i think it would have just been a very good product because honestly from battle of chaos dimension force nothing is really missing Darkwing Blast, let's see. Okay, no Sprint, whatever. It's really just Kurikara. Kurikara, Sprite Blue, and Pearl Ride. Maybe Ultimate Slayer are missing. I don't know if they have plans in another set for those. That's the only thing I can imagine, because I don't think they're not planning on reprinting those cards. Still, I think overall yes those cards are missing from the set but if you just look at what's there rather than what's not there i still think it's a it's a fine megaton the simple reason why it doesn't seem as good is because besides kurikara there really is no super super big money card from the last year and don't say thrust because thrust could have never been in this tin right photon hypernova is not in the tins there were not many big money cards in the last year. The only card is uh, Bestial Lubellion, and that's in there. Th that was the only card that was over 50 bucks consistently from those sets. Blue and Pearl I know were expensive at some point, but they are not anymore. Fenrir was expensive, but that's also in here. And so I think these tins are doing a good job at reprinting. The thing is, you pull two secrets and throw the rest of the cards away because they're bulk. I mean, the ultras have some decent reprints for sure. The supers are disappointing. The commons and the rares, there's a lot of bulk in there. But there's also some usable cards in there, but not incorrect that the commons and the rares are not phenomenal. However, I will say that is not a Megatin problem. That is a general problem with Yu-Gi-Oh sets, is that very, very often the commons and the rares are literally bulk. If you want to buy all the engines you're looking at, 40 to 45 secrets, that'll cost you 200 plus. Yes, and how much would have costed you without the tins if you really wanted all of those engines? 
Think about that for a second. If you can pick up an Exosister core, a Runic core, an Adventure Engine, a Bestial core, a Branded core, a Labyrinth core and whatnot, if you can pick up all that for 200 bucks, that's really not bad. Are you going to get that for 200 bucks? I mean, let's be real. No one is forced to pick up 10 freaking engines, but like it's going to be a lot cheaper than it used to be. That's the point. I think people just like complaining too much. And I think criticism is important, but I think just going out there and calling the set shit when literally the only card we didn't we expected to get and didn't get was like Kurikara, Sprite Blue, Pearl Rhino and everything else is there. I don't think it's very called for. Stop making sense. We want to complain. All right, I'll stop making sense. Let's talk about something that we can complain about, though. TCG Mega Pack 23 World Premiere Cards. Let's talk about these for a second, because if there is one thing I am genuinely disappointed by in these tins, it's these three cards. All of them are ultra rares in the packs. This was probably a really nice opportunity for them to make the set a lot more attractive, even for people that either don't want the reprints or maybe people are missing a certain reprint in the set like Kurikara. Maybe this would have been a way to make those people still want to open up or be interested in the set if those cards just were nice. So let's look at them one by one. Camelot, Realm of the Noble Knights and Noble Arms. Now, I will say the timing for releasing a Noble Knight support card is really good. You know, we just got Duelist Nexus Noble Knight support. You would think this is the perfect time to throw a good Noble Knight support card at the deck because Noble Knight right now is like dabbling somewhere between tier 2, tier 3. It's borderline playable, so giving them a good support card could actually make them playable and could make people significantly more interested both in the Mega Pack and in Duelist Nexus because a lot of the stuff comes out of Duelist Nexus. So this is a very good timing. Field Spell. Once per turn, if a Noble Knight card you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can destroy an equipped card you control instead. All right, not a great effect, but it's a bonus. During your main phase, you can banish this card until the next stand by face and if you do place a noble knights of the round table from your hand deck or graveyard face up in your field zone then you can special summon one artorigus monster or add to your hand one noble arms card from deck or graveyard you can only use this effect of camelot realm of noble knights and noble arms once per turn when i first read this card I thought it was a solid card because you activate it, you banish it until the next standby phase, which is a neat interaction because Noble Knights have multiple field spells. So having a field spell that like phases in and out is nice because it makes room for your other field spell and then it comes back later for the protection effect. That's a cool synergy. The only problem of this card that I have is Noble Knights of the Round Table, as far as I'm aware, is not a card that they even use. It would be a Garnet. This card is a field spell that does nothing until your end phase. Is there a good Artorigus monster that you can special summon? I know they don't play one, but maybe there is one you could realistically play. Wait, that's only a vanilla? God damn it, dude. Come on, this is giga cringe. In order to turn this card into unexpected die, <laughs> you need to be playing a brick field spell and a brick vanilla. I do not know who thought this was a good idea. If you want to promote the Noble Knight cards from Duelist Nexus, there were so many ways to do that. Why does it not have synergy? It's anti-synergy with the deck. Like you're making the deck worse by putting this card into it because of the cards you have to play with it. So I'm disappointed by this card. Time Thief Power Reserve. Okay, maybe Time Thief gets a time to shine. Let's see. Continuous Trap Card. Special Summon this card is a normal monster. This card is also still a trap. Then you can Special Summon a Machine Time Thief monster from hand, deck, or graveyard. If you control an XYZ monster that has both a spell and a trap as material, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Banish one card on the field. You can only use each effect of Time Thief Power Reserve once per turn. It's 2023. This is a card that lets you summon two monsters with one card, which is nice. But it's a trap card, which means that you're going to be playing the game on turn three. This card needed one of two sentences on it, and it would have been a good card. First option, give Time Thief a way to activate trap cards immediately. If this was something like, hey, if you control a Time Thief monster, you can activate this card the turn it was set. Or discard a Time Thief monster to activate this card the turn it was set. Phenomenal card. I'm not even saying that Time Thief was going to be good with that. Maybe it would have not even been enough, but that would have made this card playable. Make it so I can use it on my first turn, and then we're talking. 
The other option was to just give it another sentence of special summon a machine time thief monster from your hand deck or graveyard. And if you do, you can perform an XYZ summon immediately after this card resolves. That way I can immediately make a redoer that has a trap attached. That would have not even been broken. That would have been a trap card that summons a redoer that can put a card back into the deck. That would have not been too strong. That would have been completely fine. But no, this card is freaking Gear Gear Gear. In the year of our Lord and Savior 2023, Gear 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 was a playable card nine years ago. Why even bother making this? Spiral Double Agent. <sighs> this is probably the one card out of these three cards that I really did not want to be good because I'm not a big Spiral fan. Spiral Double Agent, Light Level 4 Fiend. If you have a Spiral card on your field or in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand to your opponent's field in defense position, but it cannot be tributed nor be used as material for Fusion, Synchro, XYZ, or Link. Then both players reveal the top card of their deck. You can only use this effect of Spiral Double Agent once per turn. All Spiral Monsters on the field gain 500 attack. Also, Spiral Super Agent on the field can attack directly. I understand the idea, but I don't think it's helping Spiral much. It kind of looks like a small Spiral Sleeper and it's called Double Agent and it goes to your opponent's side of the field. All of that I understand. The flavor is cool. I just think this card sucks. That's all. Stop, Imperm, dude. Read Spiral Resort once. Just once. The problem that I have with this card is that it's just a straight up minus one. I think, and I can't believe I'm saying this, in the year 2023, in a world where Spiral Master Plan is banned, right? Because that's the only universe in which I even want to talk about Spiral. I do not want to deal with Master Plan. If they are keeping Master Plan banned, it would be okay for them to make Spiral support, to make Spiral playable in a different way. But with this card, I don't see that happening at all. Like, I can't even think of a two-card combo. Name a two-card combo with this card. What do I open this with that makes me play? What can I do? Discard it for one for one. <laughs> You're right. You can pitch it for one for one. You can special quick fix and grab drones. <laughs> that is true. You got me. Okay, you got me. You're right. Okay, my bad. A two-card combo that summons this card, rather, <laughs> is what I should say. <laughs> This card sucks. The more you think about it, the more it sucks. Because this card does nothing for you. The attack boost is irrelevant. The fact that your super agents can attack directly is irrelevant because there's no way to cheese your opponent. It puts double helix and super agent to 2400. Even if you summon both, you only do 4800 damage. If it said all spirals can attack directly, that'd be cool. Because then I can make a spiral board and completely ignore my opponent's board. I don't have to remove it. I can just attack directly and win. That'd be interesting, but that's not what it does, right? That's not what it does. It's just like, I don't even know what it is. It's like part of three card combos, but like Spiral already has so many two card combos. This card is just bad. All three of these cards are frustrating to me because it's all three archetypes that probably deserved support. All three of these archetypes are not super strong in Yu-Gi-Oh right now. And all three of those archetypes could have really used a solid support card. They were simply denied. <laughs> it, it was simply like, nah, we're not doing that. We're, we're giving you guys massive copium, but the cards all suck. That is my biggest issue with the 2023 Megatons is that these cards are straight up unplayable in 2023. And that's, in my opinion, a good way to end the mega tin discussion um i think that is by far the worst part about the tins is the disappointment that i'm feeling about these new cards um the, the rest honestly reprints promos i think is fine i think the tins overall are still a fine product i don't think it's a bad product at all yes it's missing two to three cards that would have been really nice reprints but there's also a lot of cards that are really good reprints that are in there right and so rather than complaining about the one or two or three cards that are missing from it I think it's better to focus on the stuff that is in there. That's that discussion out of the way. That was a little bit longer than I anticipated, but I think the Mega Tins are like, it almost feels like a community event every year when the Tins drop because we're all like looking forward to it. We're all waiting. We're all anticipating certain reprints. Everyone has like a couple cards from the last year of Yu-Gi-Oh that they really want to pick up, but they're like slightly too expensive or they're waiting for particular, you know, prismatic secrets. Ah, yeah, that's why I felt like it was worth talking about these in a little bit more detail. 